Pack Racing has been extremely fortunate to develop a, a lot of great relationships at, at King of the Hammers and, and uh, the, the teams and the people there have really helped us grow our business, uh, give us feedback, uh, allow us to develop new products, give us ideas. We partnered up with them probably four or five years ago and you know have been running their products ever since. You know they, they were here trying to help all the racers and that's why I love partnering with Pack and other companies like that. You know, when they're here, they're supporting us, they're helping us tune our cars, you know, that's that's what's really important to me and, and the involvement. I partnered up with Pack Racing Springs as a sponsored driver and, and uh, really went to Pack uh, because they offered something no one else did, these longer, lighter rates uh, that were needed for these Ultra 4 cars. No one offered them um, and Pack was willing to make them. So uh, that also was something that attracted me to the brand, the fact that they were able to come support the racers in the field, be here with product and help with tuning. Uh, you just don't find that from everybody. And they do all of our valve springs for our powertrain, and then they do the coil springs on all the cars, and uh, they also do the sway bars and, and torsion bars and stuff that we use. And over the years, man, it's just been this killer relationship. You know, we've worked on sway bar development, and um, you know what? What he, a lot of people probably don't know because they can't see under the valve covers is that we've got their valve springs in there, and. You know, these cars are sustaining five to 7,000 RPMs for eight hours. Like, it's constantly up in that high RPM range. And when we made the switch over to pack, we eliminated all of our valve spring issues. We're out here torture testing in the King of the Hammers. There's, there's no harder or rougher environment to, to torture test your product. And for us to roll that down to, to the general consumer that's wanting to put them on their daily rock crawler or you know their Jeep JK or the JL or whatever, whatever they're putting it on, that has to give them a lot of confidence that if we can't break them, then the chances aren't great that somebody else is going to be able to. It's definitely a torture test running the King of the Hammers and, and all these other races that we do. So it's, they're race proven and you know, it proves it for everybody else in the industry, you know, for what, if it's your UTV or your race car or your, just your daily driver. They do, they do very nice products and stand behind their stuff. You know, our whole program is definitely built around products that are the best and built in the USA. It's very important to us that we're not running, you know, foreign junk on our race cars because we need the best product. I learned that early in my career that if you run junk product that, that it's going to reflect the way your race goes and you're going to end up DNFing. I can't stress enough how much building something in the States with, you know, material that's sourced in the States um, really matters at the end of the day. The quality just isn't there from uh, the overseas products and, and we've seen it time and time again. And, and no matter how good of a driver you are and no matter how good your car is, it's only as strong as its weakest link. And you know, if that comes in a, a broken coil spring, you know, that's a, that's a game under right there. I'm still a wreck wheeler. I mean, my, my family fun is to go camping and we take our, you know, 1972 CJ5 that turned into a CJ6 because of all the fun you have building them up. And, you know, you don't want to work on those all the time. You kind of want to get them dialed in and then go enjoy them. And, you know, racing is the ultimate proving ground. So going out there and, and doing this with them and then knowing that it's going to be good for your, for your wreck wheel or trail wheeler stuff is, is kind of a nice, uh, nice thing to know. I think the biggest thing about building a relationship at King of the Hammers uh, is, is 10 years of that relationship uh, giving us that feedback really helps us with the products to the sportsman racers and developing what do we need to bring out to support at King of the Hammers, what do we need to do for the other events around the country. That, that long history of developing a, a relationship with a lot of the top drivers has really helped us uh, provide.
Hey, my name is Steve Jessup. I'm the product development engineer at Pack Racing Springs, and I'm here with our brand new torsion bar rating and pre stress machine. This machine was developed by uh, our internal company, uh, Mechatronics and Machine Department. It is a full scale torsion bar rating machine. We can twist bars anywhere from you know, three quarter inch, half inch, all the way up to a three inch solid bar. Uh, the torque cell is rated at 7,000 foot pounds and the machine servo with gearbox it can twist up to about 15,000 foot pounds. Right now it's set up to do a bar rating uh, test. We can twist the bar and give the rate of the bar before we sell it to the customer. We also have the ability to pre-stress the bars so that the bars don't take a set when you install them on the car. Or we can do fatigue testing and we can twist the bar to a given amount of cycles to see how well it'll last in the field. Right now we're on our rate bar mode screen. What we're going to do is we're going to twist the bar to a certain position and get the force values at that position. Uh, as you can see right here, we have the position set to 60 degrees and that's what we're going to twist it to and it's going to give us a torque readout right here. Right now the bar is at zero degrees position and the torque reading uh, you know, is floating between zero and one. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start and you'll see the bar twisting and also on the readout it will give you a live position and torque cell reading. So after we've twisted the bar, uh, we've imported the data to our PC here, and we can bring up the first, the force versus uh, degree of twist graph. So we have our bar identification up top here. Uh, we have the force readout, and you can see it's pretty linear until the bar starts to yield right around 35, 40 degrees. You can see right here it's actually 34 degrees. Typically uh, a sprint car torsion bar works between zero and 30 degrees, so you see the bar yielding right after that. And um, you know, if you continue to twist, you'll twist the bar to failure. I'm Tim Cameron. We're here at the Southern Rock Racing Series, Windrock Park. Pretty much started Rock Bouncer back when I was, I'm 31 now, when I was 15.
the level keeps on going higher and higher and I don't know where it's gonna stop. Marty Zimmerman at Pack Racing. I've been hooked up with him for the past two years. Uh, they, they, we, do, we, do, we do all my spring stuff, all my sway bar stuff, and I can, it's easy for me to get a hold of Marty. I can tell him what I want, and he's knowledgeable to be able to put me in the right direction of what I need, and uh, couldn't ask for a better product. For instance, their sway bar stuff, you know, it's, it's over the top. Uh, I've had bars in the past that I hit a rough, a rough hole, and the bar would actually bend and stay bent. And ever since I've went to pack, I've hit rough stuff. Come back to the shop, do a bolt check. Both bars are nice and flat. So therefore it shows to me that it's a product that'll stand of use. We were going down towards like the Marine base. Yeah. And we're like, who made the trail? <laughs> we didn't, I was so nervous coming down everything. I'm like, no, I don't even know where the trail's at. Yes. Really excited about uh, Casey Gilbert and watching him grow as an off-road racer. Uh, he's been a part of our program since the early days, uh, co-driving with Mike Colville and uh, starting out on his stock class Cherokee. Watching him grow from uh, from just starting out to to winning this year has just been uh, one of the greatest uh, rewards of of uh, our involvement with King of the Hammers. Chris Berger from Pack Springs. We're out here at the 36 Hours Uari. Man, what a challenge. We had no idea what we were getting into. Everybody had watched stuff on social media last year and you're seeing, let's go wheeling with a canoe. That seemed like a good idea. And way more than we thought it was gonna be. Mission planning has, uh, has been a real, a real struggle for us. You know, everybody, it's been a good idea to uh, come up with backup plans because every time you think you got it figured out, uh, something gets thrown in the, in the way there. Okay. 
So we get here on day one and have no idea what to expect other than just gonna be beat on for several days, but it was, uh, it was more than we thought it was gonna be. Uh, grueling weather, not knowing what you're getting into, uh, having a good setup and a good co-driver is, is key for this deal. So if you're gonna plan to come next year, just get your gear in order. That's the biggest thing that you need to work on. Everybody that's out here is an experienced wheeler. I mean, you're not coming to this stuff with your, your first rig, but the stuff that we had to really battle through and everybody here is, is making mistakes and overcoming that. You know, it kinda, you're starting out with a mission plan at the beginning of the day, and as soon as something goes wrong, like the commandant yelling for you to come. So we're gonna get back to work, guys. Talk to you soon. It was, it was, we were, we were very lucky to be uh, helped out by a lot of sponsors and, and had a lot of good stuff, but it's, uh, you better be ready when you come out to play. Hi, my name is Jimmy Henderson out of Atlanta, Georgia, racing up here at Cryptic Side by Side at Dirt World Racetrack. Got some great shocks by Pack today. I really appreciate the work they've done for me. You know, a real personal relationship. They, they listen to what I say and they, they listen to what I'm feeling in the car. And he communicates back to me, you know, what, what we're trying to accomplish and what he's doing really helps me tune the car at the racetrack. The personal relationship with your shock tuner is, is just so important. Goose came up to the track, spent some time at the track, and then brought a shocks actually up to the shop and we worked on the dyno together and, and had an opportunity to get in his shop and see what he's thinking and um, you know he comes to the track he's there when I need him and I really appreciate that. They're very clear about how he's trying to set the car up and what they're trying to accomplish with the feedback and then he tells me exactly what I need to do under certain conditions and that's just makes it very simple for me at the track setting the car up on these side-by-sides.